Do you want a gun that has perfect hip fire? How about one with this insane movement speed? Or one with no recoil? Well, you're in luck because I'm showing you all of the attachments that have changed the way I play Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. Let's start with that really cool hip fire build. Now, us playing zombies, this is a personal preference of mine, I always start with the biggest clip or magazine that I can find. It does take an attachment slot, but it helps that damage per second last a little bit longer. Focusing on hip fire now, let's take a look at our under barrel and see if there's anything that helps hip fire. And of course, you could just scroll through all of these attachments and kind of look at the pros and cons and see what really helps your hip fire spread here. Or you could hit the show details button and you could see specific numbers and now you can scroll through and we're looking at this hip fire spread minimum and maximum and tax stance spread down here we can scroll through and we could see oh look that's got 19 that's got 31 that's got 12 you can see all of these different uh, adjustments here and we could look for the best one that we have for me i found this bruin grip for its 20 percent reduction in the hip fire spread maximum moving on to the laser we have a very fun and interesting thing to show you this Scarlet Box Laser decreases the hip fire spread minimum to 100%. So if we equip this and then we go to the firing range, we now have a perfect, accurate hip fire weapon. Every single time, this is going to go right where that center dot is. Even on the longest one back there, we are hitting that dummy right in the face every single time because there is no hip fire spread. That is until you start moving around. You can see how big it gets or if you start shooting for a sustained amount of time. This is the huge difference between the hip fire spread minimum and the hip fire spread maximum. So while this perfectly accurate hip fire spread build may be great for a catchy YouTube intro, probably not the most practical actually outplaying the game. Instead, I found this Corvo beam laser right here. But once again, you could just scroll through all of these guys and just compare them to anything you have and you're looking for. You're just looking for the biggest number here, which is this one. Now, once you're running low on attachment slots, I always look for two attachments attachments that I want to compare against each other. So this barrel right here gives me a 15% reduction. If I go over to the muzzle, this gets, this gets me a 10% reduction. So I'm going to go with the barrel. And I found a stock that gives me 27%. So I'm going to try to find anything else that can rival 27%. Nothing in there. We've got this again, 12%. No, so I am going with the stock. So now we have five attachments, a complete build that is made just for hip fire. Obviously, it's not going to be perfectly accurate like that one we just had. But as we're shooting, it's going to expand smaller and smaller. That is the maximum that it's going to expand. And while it might not be as flashy or accurate, this is probably accurate enough for the distances that you're playing zombies in. Also, way back in season one, they actually nerfed hip fire spread to make it a lot less accurate than it was at launch. So with this hip fire build, you have iron sights and it's kind of shaky. And if you want to be precise, it's kind of difficult. So what if we focus a gun perfectly built for recoil? Well, once again, I'm going to add my 50 round drum here because I want to be really accurate. I'm going to put on one of my favorite sights. And the next game changing attachment is going to be this Jack BFB aftermarket part. This gives us an insane reduction in recoil and in multiplayer, it increases is your radar detection it shows where which direction you're facing in multiplayer but for zombies we don't really care about that so with no other attachments this is what this recoil looks like it is really good but there's still a little bit of a wobble in there so let's try to clean that up now we'll be looking in this recoil control area. Oftentimes you'll come into a situation like this, where you have a really good recoil reduction here, good vertical recoil reduction, uh, but another attachment will have a little bit less, but more recoil reduction for everything else. So all I do is I try one out, go to the weaponsmith or, or this uh, firing range, and kind of test out and see what feels better. Don't worry, it's all personal preference, and sometimes you can't even really tell. But I can tell this one has a good amount of horizontal recoil that I just don't like. So I'm going to go with this pineapple grip right here. And once again, we have a decision between really good recoil gun kick and not so great 
horizontal and vertical recoil or really great horizontal and vertical recoil and a little bit less gun kick. I'm going with the one that has less recoil. Now, if you're full, you can still check the other attachments and see if any of them come close to comparing to any attachments you have on. So this is 14, 14, and 9, and this is also 14, 14, and 9. And then you can kind of compare, hey, you know, if I really want to switch this out, what did uh, this one do? It had a little bit more of this, whereas this one has not so many downsides back here. So yeah, I'm going to stick with that stock. So this looks like our build for perfect recoil control. So here is our build for recoil control. It's honestly really good. And of course, if you want to sacrifice a sight in order to get even more recoil control, depending on the weapon that could be really good or not, that is a much more stable weapon. But now what if our biggest thing is movement speed? Well, let's have some fun with this one. One of the biggest things you could do to increase your movement speed is to actually put on a smaller mag. And then stocks usually have a lot of good movement stuff here in fact this stockless mod right here gets you the most green over here just doing those two things i don't know if you can tell but i feel super speedy with this this is crazy of course putting on a lighter barrel will probably get us some good movement here looks like we've got a grip that'll help us with some movement speed and then this aggressor grip here all right let's test out this guy let's see oh it's so fast look at that look at that ads speed too oh my goodness and then let's check the tax stance. The tax stance. Oh, look at that. Look at how fast we can tax stance around here. That's honestly not bad. Now, clearly, we've only got 20 rounds in here because this is the fastest it can go, but it is going really fast. Look at how fast that is. That's insane. Just, just for my curiosity, with the 50 round drum, this might actually be usable. This was, I thought this was going to be a meme class here, but um, no, this is, this is actually pretty good. If you just focus on moving, yeah, that's not too bad. And then that tax stance, ooh, ooh hoo, hoo, hoo. And look how fast you tax stance. Oh, well, there you go. Focusing on movement is something that I didn't think was super viable, but it actually really is. Speaking of tax stance, let's see how I've been building my weapons lately. Now we're just gonna focus on this tactical stance spread. So of course we've got this Razor Hawk laser light. Checking our things here. We got 21 right there, 17. All right, 21 seems to be the winner here. We got 21 again with that aggressor grip. Let's check everything else. Another 21 here in the stock. Anything better than 21? Ooh, there's 32. Let's do it. We've got 8% there. Let's go back and see what this is. 15%. And this has got to be 15% as well, right? No, that's 23%. And of course, I'm going to put on our 50 round drum. And let's see what this is. No sight. Not really great hip fire, but tax stance. Oh, yeah. What did we get the tax stance down to? One one degree. One degree is really good. One degree is almost practically aiming down sights. We might be able to, okay, all right. Oh, it's not as good as the hip fire one was, but look at how good that is way down the line there. Let's stand all the way back here and that far dummy there, that is pretty darn good. And let's do a full auto test here. That is dead. Oh my goodness. That is is awesome. This is how I've been building my builds the last couple of days, and oh my goodness, it has changed the way I play this game. And what's cool is once you really start getting to know these numbers down here, you can start taking off attachments and then just re-evaluating what these numbers are going to do. So without that attachment, it's now 1.5, but if we wanted to use like a silencer or suppressor over here for something, we would be able to test off that trade-off, and honestly, that's still really good tax stance spread here. If I didn't want that suppressor and I wanted an optic for when I'm, you know, dealing with some boss zombies or something, I could still tax stance and then I could switch to a nice clean sight. It's not the best recoil, obviously, but this tax stance also has some decent movement. In fact, let's go ahead, kind of take this off, see if we can't increase that movement speed a little bit. And here we've got a semi-fast, semi-good uh, movement speed here, just tax stance. So this is kind of the jack of all trades master of tax stance. <laughs> As I've said before, not every single weapon is going to have all of these attachments, but hopefully now you know what to look for when building your weapon. Now, of course, knowing the best attachments is kind of useless if you still need to rank up your weapon in order to unlock them, which is why you need a pretty darn good weapon XP strategy. Luckily, I have the best one in the game right here. Be sure to check it out and stay beautiful.